Okay. Um, which of the following conditions is most likely responsible for this patient's presentation? Kleinfelter, Turner, uh, uh, um, PCOS, androgen insensitivity, or congenital adrenal hyperplasia. A 20-year-old male presents to the clinic with concerns about his lack of facial hair growth and gynecomastia. Um, physical examination reveals small testes and a tall, thin body habitus. Um, laboratory tests show elevated levels of FSH and LH and low levels of testosterone. Um, which of the following conditions is most likely responsible for this patient's presentation? I think this is pretty, um, pretty unique set, set of symptoms here with like gynecomastia, lack of facial hair growth, and small testes with a tall, thin body habitus. That to me is screaming uh, Kleinfelter um, syndrome. And so Turner syndrome would be the complete opposite. You would have short, um, short habitus. Um, PCOS, I believe, is only in women. You have to have ovaries to have this. And angina insensitivity um, syndrome would be, I think, you have... Uh, it would, you would have lack of secondary characteristics in, in females, I believe. And so this is a, a male. And so I don't believe that. And I don't think it's congenital adrenal, hy adrenal hyperplasia. And so I'm, I'm fairly certain it's Kleinfelter and I would stick with this is my final answer. Good. 100%, right? So um, key things about knowing, you got to know the clinical symptoms of each one of these, you know, syndromes, right? Um, I keep mentioning it, right? I know it's step one, but if you know kind of the presentation, what it looks like, what they look like, right, then you're going to be able to get it right, right? Because yeah. sometimes they're not going to give you 47XXY, right? That makes it a little bit too easy, right? And so they might mention, you know, small testes, tall, thin body habitus, um, elevated FSH, LH, right? Things like that, right? And of course, Turner's is 45X, right? um, short stature, web neck, amenorrhea, um, you can get, I think, um, hygromas, right. is kind of what they mentioned, right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, lymph malformations, right. PCOS, um, that's going to be kind of, you know, bigger, right. People, infertility, irregular menses, hertuism, right. Androgen insensitivity. I always say that, you know, um, these, these, uh, patients are, uh, are going to look like models is kind of how I usually say it because, um, they're X, Y, but they're actually, you know, female phenotypically. Right. Um, so they don't have hair, they're taller, right. They're thin, right. All that stuff. Right. And so I think that there's some models out there that are androgen insensitivity because it kind of supports that. Right. Um, you get all the good things is what I'm yeah. saying. Right. Yeah. I never um, thought about it like that. Actually, I yeah. actually do struggle a lot with AIS. Yeah. And AIS so is, you, you know, you, you get, as a model, you get all the good things, right? You don't have hair, right? I think your breasts are a little bit bigger because the estrogen, like the extra testosterone is converted to estrogen, right? Um, you're taller, right? Because you're XY, right? So um, all those things work in your favor. Of course, I, I want to say, I think that you cannot reproduce, I think. Um, yeah, because of, you know, lack of internal reproductive structures, but mm -hmm. right. Um, you could be a supermodel though. Um, but, but just ways to think about that. Okay. Um, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, right? This is, you know, um, going to be kind of, usually they say the females are, um, virilized, right. They, uh, you know, um, clitoromegaly, things like that. Right. So when you see the word clitoromegaly, what does that tell you? Does it just tell you pretty much like higher, higher, level, higher like levels of androgen? You okay, know, higher level of female, okay. right? It's kind of like hertuism, but for for little kiddos. Okay, if that makes sense, right? Okay, makes sense. Perfect.